Have you ever been embarrassed by an impatient and insecure action in your life? Welcome to the Daily Devo. I am Vince Miller. This week we're in 1 Samuel chapter 13, titled this chapter, Partial Obedience is Complete Disobedience. So in chapter 13, the Philistines test Saul and the entire nation. Enemy combatants are close at hand and the people are gathered at this gathering area called Gilgal, but the Philistines greatly outnumbered them. And then next we read this in verses 8 through 11. He, that is Saul, waited seven days, the appointed time by Samuel. But Samuel did not come to Gilgal, and the people were scattering from him. So Saul said, bring the burnt offering here to me and the peace offerings. And he offered the burnt offerings. As soon as he had finished offering the burnt offering, behold, Samuel came. And Saul went out to meet him and greet him. Samuel said, what have you done? Now, <laughs> this is a crazy moment. Basically, Samuel here does something almost similar to what Jesus did a couple of times in the gospel and essentially shows up a little late to the party. <laughs> and this long delay triggers King Saul because by this time, he's losing the people. And they are scattering. So Saul feels compelled to do something to hold the nation and the troops together until Samuel arrives. And in doing so, he offers a sacrifice that he should not have offered. Now, I'm going to confess that I would have been tempted to act a lot like King Saul does here. I mean, there are so many situations I handle exceedingly well, and I know there's a few that I don't. I could see this particular situation being a test for me, especially if I were a young leader who felt the pressure to perform before the nation, knowing I was losing the people and I was waiting for a very old man to arrive on the scene. But still, this is no justification for my rationalizations or Saul's action in the text. Saul acted in disobedience and did something he should not have done, thus his Partial obedience was still complete disobedience. You know, in my lifetime as a believer, I have found that the battle for obedience is fought entirely, entirely within my heart. <laughs> Yet this battle is elicited and drawn out by the pressures of, the situ of situations and people in this life. When the situations and the people are just the right concoction, <laughs> and become a complex and complicated matter in my life, and I don't feel like I can see a way out, insecurities and my impatience tempt me to behave based on my volition rather than my trust and faith in God. Today, I want to encourage you, fight your battle valiantly. Look at every battle twice. Discern the battle before you and the war that's actually raging within you. Don't temporarily win one battle only to lose the other, and in the end, lose them both, thus facing the embarrassment of the question. What have you done? I love you guys. Pray this has blessed you. If it has, share it with someone else, and I'll see you right back here again tomorrow.